In this video I'm going to quickly show you how to take lighting inside of Maya and bake that down to a map so you don't actually need the lights anymore. So you can see in this uh, test scene that we have here I just have a flat plane and some of these uh, different cubes and if we take a look at the UVs for this you can see how they've all got their individual space in the UV area of uh, 0 to 1 here. I've got these different lights but under lighting I'm actually saying use no lights. So this is actually all coming just straight from uh, the texture map that is currently on here. So there's two different methods of uh, baking lighting down. In a game engine usually this will be the uh, secondary UV set which is just used for light baking and baking off the uh, lighting information and then you could have a UV map that is your main one that is just for your color information. On this example I just took everything and merged it down and uh, treat it as if this is one map on this thing here like this. So to uh, actually do the baking process you're going to want to set up a few different lights. I'm going to actually show the lights that I have in the scene so I selected those and hit uh, shift H just to unhide them and then I'll go to lighting and I'll say use all lights. So it looks like the, uh, the light is added on top of what I baked out, which it is. That's because I have textures showing. So if I just hit 4 for wireframe, 5 for shaded, and then hit 7, it'll take us into lighting mode. You can see this is the actual lights that have been set up for this. And then you can see that these are actually dynamic and they've got the light moving around on here, like this. So Maya has this uh, way of taking lighting information. You can bake that down to a texture. So we'll take a look at that. Um, I'm going to need two versions of this setup because the tool expects that you are going to be baking information from one model to another. It's just the way that the tool works. So it's pretty easy to set that up. I can just call this uh, polyplane. I'll just give this a 1 and I'll give this a 2 for the second version like this. And then we're going to go under rendering and then we're going to go to lighting and shading and go to transfer maps and open up this. This is Maya's tool. Um, if you've looked at XNormal it's kind of very similar to XNormal. You can bake out normal maps, displacement maps, diffuse color which would just be the color information or shaded and that's what we're going to be using uh, so we can bake out the lighting information and the shading information. Uh, we also have alpha and you can bake out ambient occlusion as well. So I currently have it on this lit and shaded so I can just get rid of that and you can see if we click on normal map it's going to set up something to uh, bake out a normal map for you, displacement, but we're going to be using this uh, shaded version here. So we also need a source mesh and a target mesh and this is why I said you had to actually duplicate uh, these things and have two versions of it. You can't just use the same one and plug it in the target mesh and then the source mesh. It only lets you put it in one area or the other. So I'm going to put uh, this polyplane 1 as my target mesh and then do polyplane 2 as my source mesh. So a source mesh would be if you had a high resolution piece of geometry from like a ZBrush or Mudbox or something like that, that's where you'd be plugging that in and your target mesh would be actually be your game resolution mesh that you would be working with. You can see there's a search envelope for this and if we put this at something like a, a very low number like 0.1 and put this on envelope, you can actually see in red how far out this is going to search uh, for some kind of surface to get some shading information for that. So you could uh, drag that up pretty high. I do know from baking this earlier that I do want a search envelope of zero because I want this to basically the two surfaces are sitting exactly on top of one another. So you can uh, do the mesh which will hide that envelope. The envelope you can take a look at that or you can do both. Uh, and when you're done working with that search envelope you can just put that back on mesh. So I'm going to need to tell it where to put the map and what file format. I'm going to use a Targa file format for this. So after I set that to Targa, I'm going to go ahead and click on this little map area here for uh, where am I going to spit this thing out at. I'll just put it on the desktop and again I'll make sure that this is set to Targa 
on this right here. So I'm going to scroll down with this. And I've already done a few different light bakes. So I'll just call this number three like this and hit save. And I've t I'm telling it to include the uh, shadow information. I want that to bake out. And I can tell it to use this Maya common settings, which will uh, basically let me say what is the size and things like that. Uh, automatically it's going to connect maps to a shader and assign a new shader. Um, you can do that if you want for the first time. I'm going to disable that because I already have a shader set up and I have the map and I'll show you where that where I'll put that in. And I'll go to this my common output. This is where we can tell it how big is the map that we want to bake out. So if we select this geo and you look here it's basically saying this is going to be a 512 by 512 texture map. And then we can bake in this world space. World space is saying in the world, do these two objects sit directly over the top of each other? Um, we could do object space. And because these both have the same exact pivot point like this, we could bake them in object space, but not going to. I'm going to hit undo to get this back. And I'll just put this in world space. Uh, sample quality, probably the first time you do this, you want to check it, and so you keep that low. That'll keep the render times down quite a bit. This fill texture seams is set to 4, and that is basically going to say bleed out 4 pixels past this UV border, and this helps with any kind of uh, edges and things like that. If um, you get any kind of bad rendering around edges, you might not have enough uh, padding for pixels to go past the UV border on that. Okay, so once that's set up, then we just need to hit bake, and it's going to go through this process. So you can see it's going to be pretty quick for the resolution that I have, and my model is not very complex. So it's going to uh, spit that map out like that. And let's go ahead and take a look at this now. I'm going to hide all the lights like this, and I already have, um, I'm going to hide this polyplane too as well. So I'm going to select it, hit Control H to hide that. And you can see now I've got my, my model here. I'll hit Control A to bring up the attribute editor because I know I can get to the, uh, the material from this. So I'm just using a Lambert on here. And we can go to the ambient color. That's what I mapped to this. So you can click here to map something. And then let's go ahead and find this. So this is the old one, Light Bake 2. Let's go find the new texture that we have, Light Bake 3. I'll hit Open for that. And I need to show uh, textures with this because this is a texture map. So I'll tap 6, and you can see uh, we've got textures now at that point like this. And I want to make sure lighting, uh, just to make sure I'm not using any kind of lighting information, I'll you say use no lights like this. Okay, so the reason it looks like it's lit um, is because we baked that down to a map, and then in our material, we've mapped that to ambient of color, which ambient will if you put full brightness on, we'll ignore any kind of lighting information and have the appearance that it's uh, self-illuminated. Uh, you might be able to throw that into the incandescence channel as well, um, but I just know in the viewport 2.0 um, this will work for the uh, ambient. So you could take this and you could throw this into a game engine and set up a material that is very uh, similar to what we are looking at inside of here. But you can uh, take this map and you could combine it with uh, color information as well. So we could do that inside of uh, an image based program such as Photoshop or something like that. So it's possible for you to get this lighting information and have this uh, fused with whatever color that you're kind of painting for things as well. So that's how you can uh, quickly set up inside of Maya some lights and bake that down to um, a texture map that you can have inside of your model. And then at that point, you're no longer doing any kind of lighting calculation and everything is baked into the map. Now, just something to note where this falls apart. Obviously, if you took uh, the model and you move it, that lighting information is no longer valid. So this is definitely for a setup where you're going to have uh, static meshes, where they're not going to be moving and you're only going to be seeing things from this uh, vantage point. Now it is possible that we could show a light like this and we will go and say um, use selected lights like this. And I'll just make this a really obvious color that's not in there currently. So let's make it uh, like an 
orangish color like this and now you can see let's make this a little bit brighter like this as we move this thing around it's going to have the illusion that we've got this complex lighting going on but then we can get some dynamic lighting to happen as well so that might be possible for you to explore inside of a game engine just like what we're doing here inside of Maya as well.